Once again, today we come into you from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church in Athens, Georgia. You out in the radio listening audience, we appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour. And you here in the auditorium, we're delighted to have you here in the services. May God bless you. We appreciate you coming. We welcome the visitors and visiting with us. May God bless you as we enter into the worship hour today. I'm hoping that we can have a real good uplifting song service. I'm sure we will. And we'll preach to you what thus saith the Lord God. Now this is Preacher Edward speaking. Now I want you to take your Bible, will you please, and turn to Deuteronomy chapter 19. Deuteronomy chapter 19, page 237 in my Bible. Our young people are having terrific battles this day and time, facing things that we didn't face when we were young, growing up. You never heard anything much about drugs or homosexuality or uh, alcohol too much. A few bootleggers sold a little liquor around and nothing compared with this drug business today. And our young people, to me, to be prayed for because they face many problems. Reminded of the young boy, he was very anxious to get married and he carried a young girl in to meet his parents and they didn't like her, so he carried another one in. They didn't like her. He kept on until he carried about a dozen in and induced them to the, his parents and they didn't like any of them. And he didn't know what to do and he asked someone for some advice. They said, well, I'll tell you what, said, what you need to do is find one just like your mother, as near like your mother as you can find. So he searched around and he found that one. And he carried her in. And the man asked him, said, well, how did you come out on that deal? He said, man, my daddy didn't like that one at all. <laughs> so sometimes you run into problems like that, but you have to do the very best you can. Now, this tape today will be tape number 293. 293. I'm speaking on the subject six safe cities, six safe cities. And so you can write in and get the tape by number or by title, tape 293. You get all the good singing, the music, as well as the message. And you ought to write in. You and the radio listeners ought to write in and get them and play them to shut in. Listen to them yourself. Uh, you know, it's one of the best ways in the world to improve your singing or speaking or preaching or teaching is by listening to yourself on tape. And so write in and get these tapes. It'll be a blessing to you. Now, if God spares me through one week from tomorrow, I will have completed 39 years of daily broadcasting in Athens, Georgia, or out of Athens. 39 years. I kind of got into it last night in the West End Baptist Church down in Everton. I was moderating a service there in the matter of ordaining the new pastor. And I said, how many of you people remember when I went on the air? Would you raise your hand? Not a one of them. They're all dead and gone. When I went on the air, they, they didn't remember it. Been on 39 years, so I guess... The rest of them was born after I went on the air. So evidently I must be either getting old or been on the air a long time, one. And, but they didn't remember just the time I went on, which was on the first day of September 1948. So I'm hoping you're turning now in your Bible to Deuteronomy chapter 19. Let me say just this word about the broadcast. If you're not getting the daily broadcast, you can get it at 12 o'clock noon. I run into a lot of people who say, preach it, comes in on my lunch hour, and we listen to it every day. And I appreciate it. 12 o'clock noon, Monday through Saturday, listen to our broadcast. Write in and get a list of our tape. We'll send you a list of almost uh, 300 uh, tape, almost that many, not quite that many, a list of them. And you can select what you want. And in addition to that, if you write in and Say, Preach Edward, send me your brochure on your proposed Holy Land tour for 1988. I get that in the mail to you. Now's the time to make plans for that. 
going to Israel for eight days and London, England for two days. Be leaving out of Atlanta. We won't be going through New York this time. We leave from Atlanta and go across. We go across on Swiss Air. Swiss Air is the safest airlines out there today because it's a neutral country and the terrorists are not going to be messing with those airlines. God hath cut off the nations whose land the Lord thy God giveth thee, and thou succeedest them, and dwelleth in their cities and in their houses. Thou shalt separate three cities for thee in the midst of thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess it. Thou shalt prepare thee away and divide the coast of thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee to inherit into three parts, and every slayer may flee thither. And this is the case of the slayer which shall flee thither. He may live. Whosoever killeth his neighbor ignorantly, whom he has not hated not in time past, as when a man goeth into the wood with the neighbors to hew wood, and his hand fetches a stroke with the axe to cut down the tree, and the head slippeth from the hair, and lighteth upon the neighbor that he die, he shall flee unto one of these cities, one of those cities, and live. Lest the avenge of the blood pursue the slayer, while his heart is hot, and overtake him because the way is long, and slay him wheresoever he was not worthy of death, inasmuch as he hated him not in time past. Wherefore I command thee, saying, Thou shalt separate three cities for thee. And if the Lord thy God enlarge thy coast, as he has sworn unto thy fathers, and give thee all the land which he promised to give unto thy fathers, if thou shalt keep all these commandments to do them, which I command thee this day, to love the Lord thy God, and to walk ever in his ways, then shalt thou add three cities more, for the three beside these three, that innocent blood be not shed in thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, for an inheritance, and so blessed be, blood be upon thee. But if any man hate his neighbor, and lie in wait for him, and rise up against him, and smite him mortally that he die, and fleeth into one of the cities, then the elders of the city shall send and fetch him thence, and deliver him into the hand of the avenger of blood, that he may die. Thine eye shall not pity him, but thou shalt put away the guilt of innocent blood from Israel, that it may go well with thee. Last week, a young black man called me, just a young boy. He listens to my broadcast quite often. And he appreciates my ministry and appreciates my stand against the evil, against crime. And he's very much shaken up about uh, these people being slain here in Athens recently. He's disturbed about it. And he warned me, he said, Preacher, I want you to keep uh, saying something about these things and, and uh, see if you can't help the people. It's getting out of hand. Something needs to be done. And how true that is, I don't want to just harp on something like that all the time, but we know it's getting worse and it must be exposed and people must be instructed and, and there's only one answer to help curb it. Just one. And you have men that's no more than God, they think, and much wiser than God and our forefathers. And these men have changed the method of punishment where God has never changed it. God plainly said in this book, if a man takes another man's life deliberately and maliciously, that his, he's to pay. God said, I'll tell you what the fare is. What he's to pay is his life. God said he must be put to death. That's never been abrogated. That's all the way through the Bible. And God's never changed that. And that's the reason we're having as much crime as we're having today is because the liberals has corrupted our, our criminal ju judicial system today, a judicial system, I'm trying to say. They have corrupted it, and we don't have any teeth in it, no backbone in it. And you have so many of these liberal, crime-loving judges that will overturn these convictions over some uh, silly Thought that is, for instance, I read the other day where they overturned the death penalty because the lawyers in arguing the case one used some language in arguing the case that the people didn't like, and so the judge said, "Well, we just overturned that." Now that's stupid. Now that that's what you call real stupid, beloved. That could, should not be done in that manner. But what I want to talk to you about today is in the Bible, 
God has provided a way whereby if a person commits manslaughter, that is, he kills somebody accidentally, doesn't intend to do so, but he kills the person and doesn't mean to do it, now God has provided a way whereby he can escape. That is, he can keep from being put to death, but he have to do a certain thing to do it. And I want us to see about that. There's six of these cities. If you read over in Joshua chapter 20, if you read Numbers chapter 35, Deuteronomy chapter 4, you can find out more about these safe cities that these people can flee to. Now the Bible tells us, and to use an illustration, where he says, if a man goes out in the woods to cut wood and he carries his axe and his neighbor goes along and they're good friends, they think a lot of each other, and they're out there cutting wood and all of a sudden his axe slips off of the handle and accidentally hits his friend and kills him. Now God said, when that happens, I have a provision for you. You didn't mean to kill that man. And I'm going to set aside six cities, three on one side of Jordan, three on the other. And I'm going to set these cities where you can get to them. And when you commit this kind of a crime accidentally, uh, not willfully, you can take off and run to those cities. And when you get to that city and go on the inside, you'll be saved for the life of the priest there. And then, of course, you can be set free. And so he used that illustration. Now, the man's friends, his children or his other loved ones, or whom he had killed, that is the dad or the brother, now they have a perfect right if they can catch this man before he gets to one of these safe cities, they can put him to death. But if he reaches that city, he's completely safe. Now I want you to keep that in mind. But God goes on to tell you in that same chapter that I read that when a person maliciously and deliberately kills somebody, that's a different story. God said there's only one thing to do, put him to death. And so our land today is being filled with crime and you have on death row many people, many of these liberal crime-loving judges trying to get them off of death row, and a lot of crooked lawyers involved. But we have people on death row all over the nation, and some stay in there 10 years, 12 years or longer, eight or nine, being fed and cared for by the taxpayers' money. And if we in America would go ahead and do what God said do, clean off death row, and then whenever that crime is committed, don't fool around years about it. In a matter of weeks or months at the most, go ahead and put that man to death. You'd see a big change in this nation. But the liberals have messed us up, and, we, and we've got to try to get it turned around somewhere or another. And we're in trouble. In England last week, a man over there killed, I believe, uh, uh, maybe 15 or 20 people or more and wounded others. Over there in England, one man killed his own mother, and then he killed himself. You know what they said about that man? Well, they said, that sounds like America. That doesn't sound like England. That sounds like America. Now, you see how the world feels toward us today because of the lack of a strong judicial system, no teeth in our law, no backbone, and how we just pet and, and pamper uh, criminals and let them go and the world is laughing about it how ignorant those americans are let them go over and kill innocent people and do nothing about it all right with that in mind getting to the message now i want to mention these cities there were six of them our first thought is this they were in reach of everyone when this person committed this crime accidentally there was a city in reach of him the Bible says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 8, But what saith the word? It's now the evening of thy mouth and thine heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. And so that in reach of every sinner today who is guilty of manslaughter, he's guilty of having a part in crucifying Jesus, but there's a safe place for him. But he's got to get into that safe place or he'll go to hell. And God's provided a safe place for every sinner that's guilty of help putting Jesus to death, and you are, 
If you're a human being, you're guilty of help putting Jesus there. If you don't get into this place, I'm going to tell you about later, hell will be your destination. But God had a city ready for these, and these cities were appointed. They were sanctified. They were set apart. Appointed, sanctified, set apart for these people that committed manslaughter. And so is Christ set apart for us today, sanctified. The Bible says in John chapter 17, verse 19, And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Now Jesus said, I'm sanctified, I'm set apart, I'm available. And so these cities were. These cities were also on a hill to be seen afar off. They didn't put these six cities in a valley, down in a, gut, a gully. They had them up on a hill so people could see them and have no excuse. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 14, A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Christ said, If I be lifted up, I'll draw them in unto me. So the city was there so these people could see them. When this happened, this incident, they could take off to that city. Now the man did not build the city that committed the crime. It was already built for him. God had these set up. The man that committed the crime, he didn't build that city. It's already set up and it's on a hill and there was a road that led to it. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. God provides salvation for us. We're guilty of nailing Jesus to a cross, but God has provided a way that we can come to a place of safety. And that safety, of course, is in him. Now, God had the road built, and Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And then the road had to be a clean, and they, and they had to have a clear direction to the city. So no man would have any excuse. And there's no sinner today should have any excuse about coming to Jesus Christ. Because the way should be clear, the gospel should be clear, and it should be told how it can be saved. In Joshua chapter 20, verse 9, these were cities appointed, and the gate of the city was always open. No excuse. All right, you accidentally kill a man, your city is nearby on a hill, get to it. If you don't do it, the avenger can come and take your life before you reach it, if he so desires. We come to the second thought, and that is the man that had the need of safety. Now, there had to be a need, or he would never go to the city. It was a deep need that drove the prodigal son back home. It was a deep need of the woman with the issue of blood 12 years that drove her to Jesus Christ. And so we realize that our dear Lord was put to death by an instrument of wood and iron and so forth. Now the man's axe was of iron and wood. And our Lord was crucified, was put to death by nails and wood, and the men put him to death uh, were guilty of manslaughter. And so he was put to death on the cross for our sins. Died shedding God's own blood. In Acts chapter 3 and verse 15, the Bible said, And they kill the prince of life. And so we see here that mankind killed the prince of life, killed the Lord Jesus Christ. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 8, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. In Hosea chapter 13, verse 9, Israel destroys herself. So mankind has killed the Savior, nailed him to a cross. But there's hope for you. God has a place where you can escape. Now, when it comes to today committing cold-blooded murder, God has only one way, and that's death. That's what God said in this book. We do well to abide by it. Now, who's guilty of the death of Jesus Christ? The Bible said we're told to flee to Christ from the wrath to come. In Psalms 143 and verse 9, Deliver me, O Lord, from my enemies. I flee unto thee to hide me. Who's guilty of putting Jesus to death? All of us. Every last one of us, as it were, let the axe handle, axe fly off the axe and hit him. Our Jesus was nailed there because of our sins. And so what we need to do if we don't get to the right city if we don't get to the right place before we die then hell will be our destination but we can get to the right place and that right place is in the Lord Jesus Christ number three on reaching the city 
the priest was already there to receive the man. When this man realized what he'd done, killed his neighbor accidentally, he took off to the nearest city upon that hill. That was a straight road and signs leading directly to the city so he'd be without an excuse and he's running as fast as he can because the man's relatives could come and overtake him and put him to death and he's moving on. And when he gets to that city, there's a high priest standing there waiting for him and invites him right into the gate. He goes right on the inside and the man makes a full confession in the ears of the elders when he steps on the inside. Now Jesus Christ today is our high priest. You need to realize that. But in Joshua chapter 20 and verse 4, this man admits that he's committed manslaughter, that he killed someone accidentally. Maybe one of his best friends didn't intend to do it. And he tells the elders about it. The Bible tells Joshua chapter 20 and verse 4. Now that sinner, when he comes to God, he must admit he's a sinner. He must admit he's guilty of helping crucify Jesus. He must admit he's lost and on the road to hell and should have been there a long time ago. He'll have to take his place before God as a guilty sinner that helped nail Jesus to a cross and deserve the flames of a burning hell. In Psalm chapter 51 and verse 4, David said, Against thee only have I sinned. In Luke chapter 15, verse 21, the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight. And in the city, after confession is made, the man was admitted to his privileges. Now when he got into that city, and there he confessed of his guilt, and the high priest is there to take over his case, then he has the privileges in that city, all that he needs. He can enjoy being on the inside of that city. The avenger of blood cannot get in there after him because he's on the inside of the gate and, and they were safe there into the life of the priest. As long as that priest lived, that man that had to flee to that city was safe. But whenever the priest died, then he could go free. They were emancipated at the death of the priest, and we were at the beginning of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He lived us from sin. And so he could go free, but he's, he was saved as long as the high priest lived. Now, with that thought in mind, you need to realize that you're safe as long as your high priest lives. And if your high priest lives forever, you will too. If your high priest never dies, then you won't either. You have eternal life and you live as long as Jesus lives. As certain as you listen to me today. And so the high priest, our high priest, lives forever. But when this high priest on the inside of one of these cities, whenever, as long as he lived, that man could enjoy the benefits of the inside of that city. But when that priest died, the man is set free. Nobody could touch him. He could be expelled from the city, go back home, and nobody could lay hands on him because he had done exactly what God said for him to do. The Bible says, There is therefore now no condemnation of them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Romans chapter 8 and verse 33, Who shall lay anything in the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Now, beloved, we find that this man safe on the inside, free when the priest dies. Now, if this man had come to the gate of the city, knowing it shed blood, and somebody said, come on in, come on in here, Josiah. And he said, well, now, I don't feel like it, to tell you the truth. I, I'm kind of waiting on a feeling, and I don't feel much like going in. Then if he had stand there long enough, he'd get a feeling. When that avenger, when that person's loving catches up with him with that hatchet or sword, he'll feel it all right. He'll kill him on the spot. You're not saved because you don't feel like it or do feel like it. You're saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, plus nothing, minus nothing. And Josiah could have stood there and waited until that avenger caught up with him and he'd have been gone, dead, dying in his own blood. He'd have got a feeling all right. 
As a man one time said, he wasn't going to get saved until he got a feeling. And they pleaded with him, begged with him to come to God. No, I'm going to have a feeling before I'm ever saved. He's sitting out in the swing one Sunday afternoon. Cloud came up. Streak of lightning popped that swing and knocked him about 10 feet in there and knocked him about 10 feet out away from the swing. And, and he got up and said, well, I've had the feeling, all right. I think I'll, uh, I'll just get saved. Now, to tell you, it's not good to wait for some kind of feeling. If people are saved by feelings, when they come to the altar, I'd get me a good ax handle. I'd come on down and I'd give each one of them a nice feeling, get them in. That's not the way you get in, not by feelings. And, but you have the feeling after you get in. I like that. Now, when this man comes and he walks through that gate and that priest is in there and those elders and he's confessed and the priest is protecting him and he can walk around in that city and enjoy it and praise God and enjoy every blessing they have in there, and he knows the avenger of blood can't get in there, can't come through that gate, and he's completely safe. And so are you in Christ. You need to realize that. Now I'm going to mention the name of these six cities. Comment on them briefly and let you see how we can see a picture of salvation in Christ and so forth in these six cities. They're all named over in the book of uh, Joshua chapter 20. The first one is named Kadesh. That word Kadesh means holy. The Lord Jesus was holy, harmless, and undefiled. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 26. So there was a city named Kadesh, which is a picture of the holiness of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, harmless and undefiled. We come to the second city, and the second city was Shechem. That word Shechem means shoulder. The good shepherd put the sheep on his shoulder, and the Bible says the government shall be upon his shoulder. And so there you have Shechem. And when you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ in this city, it's like the good shepherd placing the little sheep on his shoulders, his strong shoulders, and saying, you're safe on my shoulder. God can carry you in that manner. And also means that one day the government shall be upon his shoulder and he'll rule and reign and we can reign with him. That's the city Shechem. We come to the third city, which is Hebron. Hebron means fellowship. We have been called under the fellowship of his son. Now, when you go into Hebron, you have fellowship. You ought to be having fellowship today in Hebron. As it were, good fellowship among God's people is invaluable. And so Hebron means fellowship. City number four, Bezar. Bezar means fortress. He is our fortress, an exceeding high tower. So you don't have to worry. He's our fortress. Psalms 18, chapter 18, verse 2. He is our high tower. He is our protector. And we are in him, and he's the captain of our salvation. He's the fortress, and he's the high tower. He sees the enemy coming, he knows, and we're safe in him. The next city is Ramoth. Ramoth means high, and he has the highest position in glory, and we're raised up in him. Jesus has the highest position in glory, and we are raised up in him. And positionally speaking, we are in him today. We are in uh, Ramoth, in that high position. Then uh, city number six is Golan. Golan means joy. And as we joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, we can shout and praise him as we sojourn. And we need to be in Golan, enjoying our salvation. Too few enjoy your salvation. But you're in Golan. And you need to enjoy your salvation. The avenger of blood can't get in there. And in Golan, just praise God. And you're safe as long as the high priest lives. And our high priest will live forever. But no self-righteous person can ever get into either, any one of those cities. Some fellow could come and say, well, I committed manslaughter. I accidentally killed a fellow. But I'm not all that bad. And I, I don't think I 
need to go into one of those cities and I'll make it all right. I'm a pretty good man. I'm good to my neighbor. I'm quite wealthy. I, I, know, I know what I did wrong. And he can stand around there and, and argue to turn blue in the face. But, but he won't go in until he admits that he sinned. He'll have to confess to those elders and that high priest that he's guilty of what he did to bring him there. And if he's not willing to admit that, he can't go in. And if you're not willing to admit that you're a lost sinner on the road to hell and need to be saved, you'll never go in. Now, God wants you in. God wants you in the city, as it were. He wants you in the body of Christ. And you've got to admit you're a sinner. No Pharisee can get in because you don't think that he, he thinks he's good enough without going in. So you've got to say, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. And then get in. All those men, when they reached these six cities, when they admitted to the elders and the high priests what they had done, they went in and the door was closed. And that's the way it must be. Now there's a grave danger in neglecting the place of the safety. Now you neglect it, you're in trouble. Jesus Christ is our place of safety, Hebrews 6.18. Now, these cities were no place for willful murders. Now, you get that. They were no place for willful murders. God said, don't, send a, don't let a willful murder come to these cities. They're to be put to death out there where they committed that crime. God's never changed this theme, and, and God's plan runs through the Bible. And when God says a man commits willful murder, God says uh, there's no provision for him. You put him to death. No need to play around about that thing and let some stupid judge get up with some stupid um, technicality and overturn the conviction. God said, to put him to death. When a man commits cold-blooded murder like some of these crimes been committed around Athens recently, a person that commits crime like that, I don't care whether it's black, white, red, yellow, or what color he is, he ought to be put to death in 30 days. A man don't deserve to be fed and taken care of with medical attention and pampered and, and uh, catered to uh, commit terrible crimes like that. Not only in Athens, but all over this nation. And whether you like it or not, a person ought to be put to death within 30 days. This crazy appealing and one appeal after another and another appeal after another appealing and appealing for 10 or 12 years. That's stupid. Whoever set up that liberal, stupid situation that is stupid and is filling the land with criminals. They ought not be over one appeal and that done right quick. And then they'll go ahead and put the man to death like he ought to be. And unless we get back to that, some of your precious loved ones, some of your friends, your mother, your wife, your daughter, your children may be chopped up and shot to death and raped and beat up of one of these days because we failed to do what God said in this book. God help us. If we don't get something done about this, these liberals that wreck in this nation and fill it with crime, and God help us. Now let me say this in closing. There was a man in the Bible, in this illustration. He was Joab's brother. His name was Asahel. And uh, Asahel, of course, uh, Abner took off after Asahel, Joab's, Joab's brother. And Abner was a fast runner, and Asahel was too, but uh, Abner took off after him and got close to him, and, and uh, he told Asahel to stop, and, and he didn't do it. And so uh, we find that the, there was a killing there on the highway. Uh, Abner accidentally killed uh, uh, Asahel there on the highway. And so whenever he killed him, he left his body in the road. And then we find that Abner went to Hebron. Now here's what happened. He went to Hebron and he was standing there on the outside of the gate. And his brother Joab, the avenger of blood, walked up and took his sword and stuck it through his body. And he died in the dirt at the gate of Hebron, one of those cities. Now, had he gone on the inside like he should have, he'd have been saved. But he didn't. He stood out there running his mouth until Joab, the brother of the man that was accidentally killed, came up and he didn't do a thing well but just take his life right there. 
And whenever he died and, and David found out about it, you know what David said? David said, oh, Abner, Abner dies like a fool dies. Oh, Abner died like a fool. Now, why did he say Abner died like a fool? Abner was standing at the gate of Hebron. All he had to do was step on the inside. He could have lived. Stood on the outside and run his mouth till Joab got there and killed him. Died like a fool. That was a foolish thing for him to do. Stand there until the avenger overtake him. And a lot of sinners today do a foolish thing. They play around with the devil in the world until they get killed or die, come down with terrible disease, and they play around like a fool. You don't have to do that. You can get right with God, get in Christ, come in the Lord Jesus, come into the right city. And if you're here today and you're not in the right city, you need to get in, come into Jesus. He is our place of safety. Let's stand our feet, you've listened well. Dear Father in heaven, I pray that you'll use the message to help thy people. Lord God, we know that our place of safety is in Christ. But we see in the Bible where you had these six cities that were safe for those that committed manslaughter and omitted it. They could go in. God, I pray that you'll speak to our heart with all committed that sin against Jesus on the cross. But I'm glad we can come into the city of refuge. 